Okay, this is another quick update. It's Monday, uh, December 9th, 2013, and we've got just a couple of hours left in the New York trading session. And I wanted to start off by reviewing the euro dollar. And as I mentioned in the previous updates, uh, along with the uh, update videos, that obviously with this pullback right up here, retesting this resistance point, uh, it wasn't anything that I was going to chase because overall this trading range from the high to the low is approximately 45 pips. That's an extremely tight trading range right there for the euro dollar. So I'm not really trading it just yet. And there was a couple of opportunities uh, several hours ago. And I, I mentioned this in the last update meeting that there was this uh, signal candle here to possibly or potentially sell it. It was a reversal candle, but I wasn't too sure that these small spikes to the upside where it was going to continue to retest this range of resistance was out of the way. I wanted to make sure until you know we really had uh, we had passed that opportunity or that situation where it might continue to spike up a few more times and it has done so several times. It just continues to make little spikes testing this resistance point but not really trending or continuing any higher. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Actually what I'm going to end up doing is waiting until the rollover period occurs. I'll be watching this uh, on a 30 minute chart and then looking for a possible HL30 to sell this pair. That's what I'm going to be looking for in the euro dollar. But I'm probably not going to sell it during the, the rest of the New York session. Uh, the euro, I'm sorry, the dollar yen. The dollar yen, again, this is a pretty tight trading range. Here's the market open. Uh, that's the last high and just the last hour that it's spiked up to. And again, this is a really tight trading range. It's approximately, we've got 90 down here for a low and about 30 up here for a high. So again, we're looking at a 40 pip trading range. That's really tight. But it is at that resistance point back over here. Uh, that high is 103.37. We talked about this in the update video. And I also talked about how I, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me to see price retest that major daily resistance point one more time. And it actually occurred today, just in the last hour. And at this point, it's possible that it might print a reversal. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to be a little more careful with this one than I am with the euro uh, dollar. Because again, it's, it's, uh, it's been in a really strong uptrend for quite some time on the larger time frames. The yen crosses. So if we look at the euro yen, the euro yen is pretty much doing the same thing. It's sort of sitting around that range, retesting levels of resistance, but not really trending and not really spiking up too much higher. Now, the last move up here obviously followed along with the dollar yen, not really as much uh, the same price action as you see in the euro, uh, euro dollar. But if we look here on the pound yen, the pound yen is a little bit different, and so is the pound dollar. They've been moving since the market opened. Now, I did not trade this one here which is the pound dollar I didn't trade this it really didn't pull back and test Friday or last week's support level as close as I would like to see it uh, test it normally in a situation like this where I see uh, support or resistance I would prefer price to pull down a little bit deeper and test that level trading like that is a little more conservative but and again, it means that sometimes I'm going to end up missing certain trades if they don't line up right for me. So I had to more or less stay away from trading this one because I really wasn't too sure. I saw this spike from non-farm payroll up and down. So it created this trading range that looks something like this. There was that high. And this is a bit choppy because if you start looking at some of the other ranges, the support and resistance levels over here to the left, it gets a bit confusing. And you start thinking to yourself, well, which one is the most appropriate range of consolidation? The only way to really find that level, again, is to go back to this consolidation range that I've been using since last week, which was a high of 1.6440 and that low down here at 1.6313 approximately. And so far, no candles have really closed above that resistance or below that support. But if I was to then try to line things up with the spike and the reaction that happened on Friday, up until the last couple of hours, price remained inside of the previous day's trading range. And I find those a bit more unreliable signals when price starts trading inside of a previous day's trading range. And you'll notice it continues to one day continues to trade inside of the previous day and just keeps repeating itself. That's consolidation, clearly. By definition, that's consolidation. But in this case, again, I was waiting for the possibility of perhaps selling it at resistance from Friday's high if that was going to be a possibility and it really didn't line up correctly I mean it really didn't give me a solid reversal candle pattern so I didn't trade it there and then it turned around and spiked right back up but again you'll notice that with this uptrend line right here it's not the only thing that was providing resistance 
but visually you can see how price was finding a difficult time along the bottom side of this uptrend line they do work they do provide a visual confirmation of what it is that you're looking at whether it's support or resistance so it's worth leaving some of these significant trend lines on your chart for a little while longer usually people will come in and sort of strip all these trend lines away if they don't line up and they're looking at really short-term trends if you leave some of the longer term trends you'll find that they do provide uh, more uh, like I said uh, it's like a, a visual confirmation of support and resistance it's not so much that this is exactly what's providing that resistance at that moment again it's just that if I'm looking at it and other traders are looking at it and there's also these major psychological levels along with Friday's high or Friday's low they could provide additional forms of confirmation if I was to perhaps sell it but again that really didn't line up and didn't give me a solid signal to sell it and then I just stayed away from it so I didn't trade this but at the same time I didn't go in the wrong direction against what was happening here on the pound dollar to lose any money either you'll notice that right off the open it dropped and it looked like it was gonna perhaps even take out that support level at 1.6313 I really wasn't too sure so I really have to wait I have to wait until price reaches again either a major resistance point or a major support level and then watch to see the reaction at that level at that point is it going to reverse away from support or resistance and pull away or is it going to break out of that trading range finally and you'll notice this trading range has been in place this spike low down here was from November 29th so it's been in place for quite some time so we've got to wait a little while longer I don't have a signal on this one just yet and I'm not too sure I'm ready to sell the euro dollar just yet either so it's been a relatively slow trading day as far as price action but it's been a really busy informational trading day in other words we've received a lot of information a lot of updates a lot of statements a lot of comments throughout the London and New York session it's been a really interesting day a lot of analysis based on uh, Friday's non-farm payroll there's been a lot of information out there that's hit the market so it's a lot of information to digest so in, in, in that sense it also doesn't surprise me that we're seeing the markets sort of move sideways and relatively slow because it's like you're trying to look for the next um, decision uh, the next piece of news that's going to help you solidify your decision that will also help create some kind of trend because of enough traders the market collectively starts to see this information and starts to feel comfortable with this uh, information then we start to see uh, trades or, or their for a lack of a better term uh, their bets they're they're placing their bets to see which direction price is going to move in and we start to see a trend so that's really what I'm waiting for I'm probably gonna have to wait until the rollover period to actually get uh, any solid trading signals and it's probably gonna start off slow with the HL 30 during the Asian and the London session and then hopefully we'll pick up some breakout trades uh, during the London and New York session for Tuesday which could potentially trade or show up here in the pound dollar now there are also uh, let's talk about the commodities the commodities gold and silver are still inside of that trading range oil did pull away from that resistance as I mentioned in that previous update video when we were talking about commodities that there might be an opportunity to sell that HL 30 so uh, several Several of you emailed me already saying that that was a great opportunity you sold oil for a few points there that's awesome again that HL 30 pattern and the breakout patterns those techniques work on commodities they work perfect so if you look at the oil chart you can see how it retested that resistance point that we were talking about and then it pulled back and provided an opportunity to sell it just a short-term trade remember we don't hold on to them too long with that HL 30 but it worked perfectly so congratulations for those of you who traded oil and again I'll make another update video after the rollover period probably a couple hours into the Asian session so that that way we can try to identify any po uh, potential or possible uh, HL 30 trade setting up